The TRAPPIST-1 solar system is often thought of as one of the best places to look for habitable conditions out in space. JWST though, the biggest telescope we've ever put in space, is slowly ruining that idea. There are seven known planets orbiting the star called TRAPPIST-1, and this system is just over 40 light years from Earth. This makes it a reasonably nearby system for us to study, and JWST is doing just that. We've now got analysis from the telescope on another one of these TRAPPIST planets, known as TRAPPIST-1D, and the results are not as promising as we might have hoped. In short, JWST has looked at the planet, analysed whether it could have an atmosphere similar to our one on Earth, and found there is absolutely nothing of the sort on TRAPPIST-1D. If you want to know more details, stick around and we'll get into all of that, and even preview what JWST could see when it gives us information on the remaining TRAPPIST-1 planet. TRAPPIST-1 is an ultra-cool red dwarf star. This is a type of star that is a lot smaller and a lot cooler than our sun, but between 2016 and 2017, we discovered seven planets around that star, named B through H, moving further away from the star as we go through the alphabet. Most of them are pretty similar in size to the Earth, and we expect them to be rocky planets just like us too. It's also cool to remember that since a star is so much cooler and smaller than our sun, even though there are seven planets here, they all orbit TRAPPIST-1 closer than Mercury orbits our sun. However, while these planets would be charred, barren, hostile rocks in our solar system, around TRAPPIST-1, up to four of these planets are in the habitable zone. These are planets at a distance from the star, where the temperatures are just about right for liquid water to exist on the surface of those planets. It's a Goldilocks zone, where temperatures are just right for that liquid water. In our solar system, Earth is in the habitable zone, of course, but so is Mars, and for the very widest part of Venus's orbit, it too might just dip into the habitable zone, depending on the exact estimate you use for the size of the zone. This tells us that being in the habitable zone on its own is not enough to mean it actually could host life, but it gives us a chance at one of the important ingredients for all life as we know it, water. The TRAPPIST-1 planets in the habitable zone are G, F, E, and D is probably on the inner edge of the zone too. That's the planet that JWST has just released results for. This is the third planet from the red dwarf star, orbiting at just 2% of the distance that the Earth is from the Sun, and completing each orbit in just four Earth days. JWST used its NERSPEC instrument to study the planet. This is the near-infrared spectrograph, an instrument that breaks down the light it receives into all of the individual wavelengths that make up that light. Doing this and counting how much of each wavelength we receive tells us about the different elements and molecules that make up the planet and can tell us whether or not there's an atmosphere around the planet too. If so, it can also tell us about what that atmosphere is made from. The output from something like NERSPECT is a spectrum that normally looks a bit like this, with peaks and dips, where each peak or dip corresponds to a different molecule or element present around that planet. I haven't actually seen one of these being released for TRAPPIST-1D, and that's probably because they didn't find anything particularly interesting. So the spectrum would just be a more or less flat line with some noise around that flatness. So not particularly good science to look at. We really think atmospheres are very important for planets that might be hosting life. They provide air to breathe, and protection from solar radiation, cosmic rays, and small meteors too. Now, they probably aren't strictly essential for life. For example, if a planet or moon has a large ocean under a crust or layer of ice, we think that could in theory support life too, but atmospheres are certainly good starting points most of the time when we're looking for planets that could be habitable. NERSPEC on JWST, however, found no evidence of any of the molecules that are common in Earth's atmosphere. This means that the planet is very unlikely to have an Earth-like atmosphere, as we saw no evidence for things like water, methane, or carbon dioxide. We're hoping that more studies could expand on this in the future, though, as there are still a few potential explanations for this lack of a detection. 
Firstly, the planet could still have some sort of a very thin atmosphere that's just very difficult to detect, even for JWST. That would be similar to something like what Mars has. Alternatively, there could be an incredibly thick, suffocating atmosphere, something more similar to what we see on Venus. If it has a lot of thick, high-altitude clouds, it could block a lot of the signals we're looking for when we're trying to detect these elements that would reveal an atmosphere with Earth-like ingredients. The third option is the bleakest, and that it is simply that TRAPPIST-1D is indeed just a barren rock with no atmosphere. It sounds sad, but this is also probably the most likely option. I say this because of the fact that TRAPPIST-1 is a red dwarf star, and those pose a lot of difficulties for planets that orbit around them. These stars are often releasing flares of high-energy radiation that can blast away and strip off atmospheres from planets especially when they're orbiting closely. On top of this, there are quite a few reasons why life on the planets might be difficult too. These include the fact that all of the planets are likely to be tidally locked to the star. This means one side of the planet is always facing the star and one side is always facing away. A permanent day side and a permanent night side. This is just like the moon and the earth. The moon is tidally locked meaning we always see the same familiar face of the moon from here on the Earth, and we can never see the other side. This would create an extreme temperature gradient where one side of the planet is very hot and the other is very cold. Another issue with being so close to the star is the UV radiation given off. Too much ultraviolet light can sterilize the surface of a planet and kill off any chance of life developing. On the other hand though, not enough UV light may not allow for the formation of chemical compounds that are required for life. So a delicate balance here is required. That said, red dwarfs are the most common type of star in the universe, which is one of the reasons we're so keen to detect atmospheres on the TRAPPIST planets. It would tell us that habitable conditions may be possible on planets around the most common type of star, opening up a lot of exciting possibilities. We think most stars host planetary systems, so if the most common type of these could indeed have conditions that are viable for hosting life, that is a lot of potential planets for us to start looking at. If these atmospheres can persist around these volatile stars with harsh waves of radiation, they are likely to be possible almost anywhere. However, we've not yet had any encouraging data in our search for habitable conditions around TRAPPIST-1. JWST analysis has already ruled out significant atmospheres on 1b and 1c, although they were always too close to the star to be prime contenders for habitable planets. But now 1d is looking much less likely too. So what is next for the TRAPPIST-1 system? What about the other planets in the habitable zone? Well, we will eventually get JWST data on all of the remaining TRAPPIST-1 planets, and some hold more hope still. Planets E, F, G, and H may well have a better chance of having an atmosphere since they are further away from the star, and hence they don't quite receive as much energy from the atmosphere-stripping eruptions of the star. However, this distance will also result in a colder environment, and this can make atmospheric signals harder to detect, even for JWST. TRAPPIST-1H is also outside of the habitable zone, so personally I'm more excited to hear JWST's findings for E, F, and G. The further away planets from the star may be more like snowball planets than lush green and blue planets, but they may also offer conditions for subterranean oceans or thick atmospheres like the moon Titan in our solar system. What is true is that not all hope is yet lost for the atmospheres on TRAPPIST-1 planets in general. We didn't see a big, bold signature of an Earth-like atmosphere on 1D, but there is still the potential for the outer planets. We can rule out 1D from being an Earth twin, but maybe one of the others is more similar and might retain some sort of an atmosphere. Fingers crossed. Leave any questions or thoughts you have down below, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe, team. I'll see you soon. Bye!